Hey everybody, and welcome to another Interest of the Modeler HFO. Today we're going to meet modeler James Jacob. I first met James on Google+, and he's been a follower of my channel for some time now. James is an avid skill builder who builds both military and sci-fi models. James lives in the UK, and today's interview is certainly an example of how the internet allows us to meet and befriend other modelers from all over and discuss and share ideas about our hobby. Now, I do have to take a second to apologize for the audio. Unfortunately, there was a bit of an echo, and I hope it's not too much of an issue. So let's go ahead and meet modeler James Jacob. Hi, James. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, and uh, welcome to Interstellar Modeler. Thank you for being on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, of course. Great opportunity, of course. As you know, I'm interviewing different modelers, so it gives you a chance to talk about the hobby. And, and uh, so why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and how you got started in modeling? Yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, um, my name's James. Um, I'm uh, rapidly approaching 40. I'm being a husband and a father. I get about a grand total of about two or three hours a week um, uh -huh. to myself. And I use that time to uh, build models. I've been doing it for a number of years. Um, back, I think the first time I've actually built a model when I was about five or six years old with my dad. Um, it was a, a Luke Skywalker X-Wing fighter. I'm a, a big Star Wars fan as well and um, had a great time. It was great building the kit with my dad. It was a quality time. Even though I do remember we managed to glue Luke's arms on backwards. Um, <laughs> but it was a fun experience. And then um, about uh, five or six years later, my oldest cousin got a big um, 1 to 350 scale battleship Bismarck. Oh, yeah. And sort of seeing him do that um, over the course of a, a few months, and uh, I was hooked. I thought, yeah, I want one of those. And um, it went from there, really. Now, I notice that you build both military and sci fi. Uh, mm -hmm. So, can you tell me what interests you about each of those genres? Yeah, sure. I think probably the, start with the, the sci fi one. I mean, um, I sort of grew up with Star Wars. I was, my mum and dad can vouch for this. I watched it on a loop when I was younger, on the, back in the VHS days, constantly. And um, it's sort of the obvious step from there, really. Um, yeah, so mostly sort of Star, Star Wars and stuff. I built a few Star Trek models, so I enjoyed watching that show. Probably not as much as Star Wars, but it's, it's sort of space and sort of takes you away and that sort of thing. And um, from the military side of things, I think... I don't know what it is, really, because... Um, I've got no real sort of naval connections at all as a family. My mum and dad live near the coast. I went to university in a, a coastal town. But I think it's um, the, the type of kit that interests me. Because uh, the one to three fifty scale ones are quite quite big and um, have a lot of attention to detail. Mm -hmm. They're not too small and pernickety that you can. Some of them are just too small. Like I haven't got the motor control in my hands to do some of the extra detail. <laughs> but, right. um, it's a really good opportunity to sort of you know, push the boat and learn new skills. So let's take a minute to take a look at some of your work. Uh, you sent mm -hmm. me some pictures here. Both you chose the Millennium Falcon and the uh, an aircraft carrier. The, it's the Nimitz, it's is it? Okay. Let's uh, let's talk about the Millennium Falcon. So which uh, Millennium Falcon is this now? Um, the one I got is the I think it's the one to one four four scale fine molds version. Uh huh. You do a one to seventy two, which is a lot bigger. But um, this one I got uh, well, about four four or five years ago, I think it was now. Mm -hmm. It's a great. It's not very big. It's mm -hmm. probably like the size of a dinner plate sort of thing. But um, what got me interested in it is just the amazing level of detail that the, cop the kit has got. It's, it's staggering. I've built kits that are a lot more expensive, a lot bigger, that have got nowhere near the detail. So obviously, um, anyone who's seen Star Wars, you know, Millennium Falcon is a, a very classic kit, arguably the most recognizable sci-fi ship, mm -hmm. maybe the best enterprise from Star Trek, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, but sort of building the kit is one thing, but um, it's a very worn, dirty type of ship. It's, you know, it needs a lot of weathering, basically. Yes. And I've never really done any weathering apart from a bit of a panel line here and there. I was like, oh, don't touch it, don't touch it. Yeah. Thing. So right. I mm -hmm. bought my first MIG pigments for that and some weathering powder and then um, put that on and then also oil paint as well. So I remember um, doing it downstairs in the dining room, stinking the room out um, mm -hmm. with the oil paints and uh, you know, getting rid of the varnish and the, um, the thinners and stuff. But it was really good. You know, the first time I'd done it, yeah, rust lines, and that was um, something that I really enjoyed doing. Uh, how long did it take you to build a Falcon? 
probably one and off that sort of three months, I think. I got it for uh-huh. Christmas. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think I got it um, before The Force Awakens had even been discussed. So at the time, it was sort of, you know, the true the final representation of the Falcon. But I think, yeah, about three months. I mean, that's not doing it every night, obviously. Yeah. Um, life gets in the way and things. But, um, I mean, I think, you know, if you put your mind to it, you could probably do it in a couple of weeks if you really wanted to sort of thing. It does need drawing yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, and I agree with you. The funnest thing about Star Wars kits is the the uh, weathering. I think that's really mm-hmm. a fun thing to do, and, and um, they're not as clean as other ships can be, like in the Star Trek universe. They tend to be, you know, kind of pristine. Uh, yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, it certainly gives you the opportunity, like you said, to try different um, modeling techniques and weathering techniques, and that's really um, a huge part of the fun of it, for me anyway, as well. So Yeah, yeah. and it's quite um, close to the heart, actually, the Falcon, because it's... Um, you might not know this, but um, the Millennium Falcon original set was built in a town in South Wales called Pembroke Dock. Um, and my great grandfather worked as a shipwright in the same dockyard, so mm-hmm. sort of a distant relative, but it's sort of a strong family connection there as well. So right. sort of extra care and attention. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back to the aircraft carry now. That very beautifully done, I have to say. Uh, I've Thanks seen you've, you've uh, posted. Um, pictures of your work online and I've been a big fan of your work. I, I think you uh, show just an incredible amount of attention to detail. It's, it's, it's about a meter long, or I think three feet, you'd say, over there. Uh-huh. And um, it's massive. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much the biggest kit you can get. So this kit alone kept it quiet on and off for the best part of four years. And I think what was sort of makes it um, extra detailed is the fact that you can buy so much extra photo etch parts for the kit, uh-huh. which I yeah. never built before at all. Mm-hmm. It's this scary sort of having to deliberately cut bits off of what is quite an expensive kit to start with. Right. Um, so you sort of put it all together, you can really start um, seeing the difference in the fact that. I think with these type of kits, as I've said to people before, it's, a, it's like an onion. It, it takes a while to make any noticeable difference on the kit. It's not sort of like with a, a Starship Enterprise, you glue the saucer on, you glue the engine on, and you've basically got a ship. But this one, it takes a while. It's really sort of you know, got to stick at it. And then I remembered I needed to make 50-odd aeroplanes as well. So they're all made up of about six or seven parts. need to be weathered and decals and stuff. So, you know, from a pound per kit cost versus hours of enjoyment, it's it's quite cost effective if it's here to mean, you know, it's more right. you can build them if you can, whereas others you can keep you quiet in the winter months and out of trouble. <laughs> sure, yeah. Is there anything that you'd like to share in particular with the modeling community? Yeah, I think um, just doing this is a fantastic way of how I think all hobbies have grown and sort of the world has changed. It's, um, Probably as recently as 10 years ago, probably a bit less, the only person I knew that built models was my cousin, and mm-hmm. he hadn't built them for 20 years. So I think it's great, sort of, you know, having Google Plus, Facebook, and YouTube, obviously, is, is, is amazing. You can do your research, you can read articles, you can look at pictures, you can watch videos, but it's only recently you can put something on Facebook or Google Plus to say, does that Does look right to you? Is it a bit mm-hmm. dark? Should it end this way? You know, it's, it's right. the little thing. You just can't, you know, you can imagine trying to Google search, is my antenna too far to the left? You'd never find the answer. Yes, right. That, that's the sort of thing that I, I quite like doing. While building models might seem geeky to a lot of people, probably not people watching this, they've obviously got an interest, but I think everyone needs a hobby. And even the people that might sort of be a bit sort of judgmental towards our, our way to spend our leisure time, I bet you they do something. You know, there's everyone <laughs> in a hobby going running, knitting, playing tennis. You know, it's good to do something. Cause I, I spend a lot of my time at work on the computer, so I don't really get yeah. to use my hands very much. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to be creative, lock yourself away for an hour, put, you know, have a cup of coffee, listen to your favorite music, or watch a movie while you're that sort of thing. I've sort of come to see models like other people built that enterprise that makes mine look like I did it in the dark with my eyes closed. They're just absolutely stunning. And I, you know, having yeah. built it, I know just how hard it is to do that. Yeah, um, but you know, for people, people sort of starting start out, out, don't worry if yours doesn't look like the ones right. you've seen on the internet. They all started where you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just time, practice, a bit of patience, learning from your mistakes. You know, the number of times I've glued my things together, the number of times I've cut my hand, I'm sure you're the same. <laughs> yeah. you know, I soldered my hand once with a soldering iron by mistake, lighting my first model, never doing that again. Um, but it's, it's fun, you know, it keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, it's time for my five 
uh, questions that I want some quick answers to. So let's okay. start with favorite model of all time. Selfishly, I have to say the Enterprise I built. I think it's mm -hmm. uh, kept me quiet. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears literally went into that. How about uh, favorite part of a build? Um, I think it's the the last stroke of the brush or the final decal that goes on, putting it on the display stand, taking a step back and say, I made that. Uh huh. And uh, how about favorite detailing technique? I'm not sure what technique overall, but for me, it's, it's the it's the attention to detail. Mm -hmm. I like you know making sure that that little bit is painted just so, or that photo mm -hmm. edge is bent just right. No one will ever notice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know it's right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now, if you could see any ship come to life as a commercially available kit, what would it be? I think today it would be being. British and being a fan of aircraft carriers, it would be to have a, a Wanda 350 HMS Queen Elizabeth, our, our new oh, yeah. aircraft carrier. Um, and funny enough, I actually contacted them via Facebook um, the day it was launched a few months, a few months ago. Um, and I mean, there's no plans yet, um, but uh, I shall keep on, keep on it. But I think it would look great, basically. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be one eventually. Um, is there anything sci-fi modeling that you haven't tried uh, or and would like to? Like maybe is there a subject matter, a certain scale, or uh, techniques that you haven't tried? Yeah, I think um, I built plastic kits, I built resin kits, I built um, 3D printed kits, a couple of 3D printed lightsabers over my shoulder, but um, I've never built a vinyl kit. Um, I saw a bit of a bargain on eBay um, a year or two ago, which is a Ed 209 from Robocop. It's one to nine scale, so it'll actually go exactly the same scale as uh, that Igor Iron Man over my shoulder. Um, I've looked at it a couple of times. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's come out of the box, but um, I, I don't know. I think it's just a bit apprehensive. Really. It needs to sort of pull the band-aid off, as they say, and um, just, just get, get on with it. And, um, right, it go. exactly. Um, I think, you know, it's new techniques. It's a lot of filling, super gluing, you know, putting it in hot water to mold it and bend it, because they always come out and look um, a bit scruffy around the edges, I think. So it needs a lot of TLC, but um, yeah. one day, one day. Right, yeah, good. Well, great. Thank you for being on. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, you're, this is a perfect example of how in modern day or modern technology, if you will, being able to connect like this because, uh, gosh, I'm, I, I know you and I remember the days when this was not around and, uh, yeah. you know, it's just hard to, uh, sometimes I, I just am amazed at the um, way we're able to connect these days. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I met you on a, on a Google Plus page. I think that's where we first started uh, communicating. So. and. And, uh, and you followed my channel and so forth. But uh, it it's really been a pleasure to have you on. So thank you very much. Thank you very indeed. much. Indeed, and I'm a big fan of your work. I was, I was looking over your channel last night. I think the, the first video I watched was your um, Battlestar Galactica. I was looking at the date. I think it was 2013. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah time's nice. definitely nice. flown. Nice. All right, James. Well, thanks for being on, and uh, happy modeling. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.